So is etiquette really something you need to worry about when planning a wedding today? Well, kind of. So what exactly is etiquette? If you look in the dictionary, etiquette is a customary code of polite behavior. And that's how it functions in weddings too. Following etiquette rules can help you tackle sticky situations while planning and making everyone involved feel comfortable. So let's answer some of the top etiquette questions. Who pays for the wedding? Back when our grandparents got married, the answer was pretty straightforward. The bride's family pays for the wedding, the groom's family pays for the rehearsal dinner. Nowadays, we all know that a wedding doesn't always include a bride and a groom. And many couples have their own money and can pay for the wedding themselves. In fact, the data shows that parents typically pay for about half of the wedding and the couple pays for the other half. When dealing with the who pays debate, just remember that anyone who contributes money to the wedding does get a say in whatever it is they're paying for. So if your parents are paying for your venue, you need to make sure they're happy with the wedding location you choose. If I was in someone's wedding party a long time ago, do I have to include them in mine if we're no longer close? Your wedding party should include friends and family who you're close with right now. And honestly, most of the time your former friend isn't going to want to be in your wedding party if you're not close. Can I invite my ex to the wedding? It depends. If you dated a million years ago and it's all water under the bridge and everyone gets along now, invite them. Or if your ex is part of your friend group and everyone is comfortable with it, by all means. But if anyone is uncomfortable with your ex attending or there are any concerns about your ex's behavior, skip the invite. Do I have to give my single guest plus ones? I talked about this a few episodes back. Click the link down below to watch our guest list episode. Married guests should always be invited with their spouse and couples who are unmarried but in long-term relationships should also get a plus one. If you have guests who are in newer relationships or not in a relationship at all, it's your call. But I recommend making a rule and sticking to it. If you're not going to invite plus ones for guests who aren't in long-term relationships, don't make exceptions. Also, think about your guest list as a whole. If you are inviting mostly married couples, you may want to allow plus ones as a courtesy. But if your guest list is mostly single folks, then plus ones might not be necessary. How do I deal with guests who want to bring people to the wedding who aren't invited? Guests try to write in the name of someone who isn't invited on their RSVP card. You'll have to pick up the phone and call them, or you can delegate this to your parents or your future spouse. Say something like, because of our budget, because of our capacity, we can't accommodate additional guests. Can I invite someone to a shower who isn't invited to the wedding? Technically, no. Anyone who is invited to a shower or any pre-wedding event for that matter should also be on the wedding guest list. The only exception, and this is super rare, is if you're having a very small destination wedding and just immediate family and everyone else is already aware of it. Can I fire a member of my wedding party? Now think long and hard about it before cutting them loose. If you fire them, your relationship is probably over, but maybe having a heart to heart about your concerns. Can you put information about your registry on your wedding invitations? So this is a no-no. Putting registry information on your invitations looks like you're directly asking for gifts. But there is a workaround. Include an insert with your invitations with your wedding website information on it, and then include your registry information on the website. Can I ask for cash instead of gifts? So, the best way to ask for money without texting your guest your Venmo account info is to set up a cash registry. Cash registries allow guests to contribute to a large purchase, like a down payment on a new house or a car. It's really easy and you can do it on the knot. Just know that some guests will want to buy you gifts instead of cash, so you should probably set up a traditional registry too. Who gives a toast at a wedding? Traditionally, whoever is hosting the wedding gives the first toast at the reception to welcome everyone. Old school rules say this is the father of the bride, but it can be both parents or other loved ones. Then the best man and maid of honor give their speeches. Toward the end of the night, the newlyweds usually give a speech to thank everyone. A lot of this depends on your family relationships, so the whole who gives a speech thing is really up to you. Do we have to feed our wedding vendors? <laughs> This is a huge yes. Your wedding pros are working super hard to make your day a success. Work with your wedding planner and caterer to find out how many meals you'll need so no one gets hangry. When do I have to send thank you notes? So yes, handwritten thank you notes are still a total must. 
and you may have heard that you have a year after your wedding to write your thank you notes. Don't wait that long. Your guests will wonder if you received their gifts in the first place. I recommend writing your thank you notes within two to three weeks for gifts that were received before the wedding. After the wedding, you have a bit more wiggle room, but I don't recommend waiting more than a month or so. Hopefully, I've answered a lot of your burning etiquette questions here, but if not, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And be sure to check out The Knot for even more expert etiquette advice, and subscribe to our channel to check out all of our wedding planning videos. We've got lots more exciting videos coming up, so thank you for tuning in.